Hello. Hi, is this Tony? Uh, this is uh, his wife, Peggy. Oh, okay, hey, Peggy. Uh, this is Steve Day from the post office. Yes. I was just calling to let you know we're going to be um, changing the location of your mailbox, and a lot oh. of a lot of the mailboxes in, in your neighborhood uh, starting yeah. on Monday morning. Um, they're going to be moving pretty much all of the mailboxes from your street directly yeah. in front of your house. In front of our house? Yeah, there's going to be about 120 of them. Oh my gosh, we don't like that. Well, why not? Well, it's going to be right in front of our house. Yeah, like yeah, all it's going to be mailboxes. It's going to be a, a just a really long row of them. It's going to go pretty much from one end of the property line of your property line to the other. So it's going to block our our house. Well, it's I really don't it's not we gonna, really don't like that. It's not going to be in in your lawn. It's going to be like on that little yeah, I know, miniature lawn. I know, but it's going to take away from the curb appeal of our house. Yeah, well, they're they're going to be nice looking mailboxes. They're going to be silver. Silver. <sighs> yeah, I've seen those before, and they end up not being so nice. Well, no, they, um, they're, they're stainless I'm not happy steel. They're, they're We're not, not gonna, happy with this. They're not going to rust or anything. And also, like that whole grass patch in front of your house. Yeah, uh, you won't have to mow it anymore. Because from one end all the way Hold to the on other. A minute. Let me tell my husband because I don't know if we can contest this or not, but, uh, from, but from, it does not sound from good. From one driveway to the other. We already called the neighbor to the right of you and they didn't complain. Yeah, because it's in front of our house. Well, no, it's going to be in front of both of your houses from one driveway to the other. Just a big silver wall of mailboxes. It's to make things... From the- so. Yeah, I know what it is to make it more convenient for you guys. Yeah, well, it's convenient but it's for you, too. Be, um, I, not I, really. I think you'd be the Ours happiest. It's very convenient as it is. Uh, hold on. I would think you'd be the happiest. Every mailbox on the street right in front of our house. One of those big silver things. You know, like they have at Mom and Dad's. Yeah. Who? The post office? Yes, the post office. Why not put it down by the power? Why not put it down between the houses where the power lines are? Well, they just decided this was the best place. You know, it's centrally located. Well, centrally it's not located. the best place for us. It's going to take away from the curb appeal of our house. It actually is the, so, it's the, it's better for you than anyone else because it's right in front of your house. You don't have to walk don't, down the We block. don't care. Ours, ours is, I don't care. It's, it's the way it's going to look. And you won't have to it's, do any upkeep I, I, on I, your mailbox because we noticed, you know, you have that mailbox out there and it looks kind of hobo-y. No, it looks just fine. And if well, we replaced a mailbox two years ago, and yeah, um, but you replaced it with kind of like a cheap, cheap style. Like it looks. You know what? I I know what you're talking about. Those silver mailboxes that you have to have to open a key, and people drop their mail and leave it in, down there, and then we'll have to pick it up. And besides that, it's going to take away from the appeal of our house. Well, your house isn't that nice. Like I, I've got a. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, I'm, what did I'm, you say? I mean, it's covered by. Can I speak to your? Can I speak to your supervisor, Ma'am, please? Ma'am, I don't mean anything by that. I just mean it's covered yes, by do. trees. We don't have any trees. We have trees in, way in front of our house, but not on the, not where you're talking about. Yeah, but like you know, when they're all in bloom and everything, you can't really see too much of your house. Yes, you can. You, I don't know uh, what you're talking about, but maybe you have the wrong house. But um. Our, our lawn is very well kept. Very well. I, in fact, a lot of people say our lawn is the best in the neighborhood. Oh, people just say that to be nice. Let me. But, can I speak to your supervisor, please? Sure, I can put her on. I don't, I don't see why you yes. need to be like this about it. Um, but, well, you're being really ugly. No, I'm not being ugly, ma'am. Not, us, our, house, our house doesn't look very nice anyway. I Let me speak to your I didn't supervisor. mean it like yes, that. You, you're, you're, well, ta- you, you're taking it the wrong way. Well, you've said several things that um, well, you called me ugly. That were very offensive. No, I didn't call you ugly. I said what you said was ugly. I would like to speak to your supervisor, please. Okay, yeah. Well, I think your house is ugly. Just a minute. Let me get Carol. Oh, my God. He said, I think your house is ugly. Hello, this is Carol. Can I help you? Carol, are you a supervisor with the postal office? Yes, I am. I don't know who I was just speaking to, but he was downright rude and ugly. Oh. He's telling us that you guys are going to relocate all the mailboxes on our street right in front of our house, which, first of all, we have a real problem with. Ma'am, I, I know that, that that was Steve Dave, and I, I know he's not good looking, you know per se, me? but you shouldn't... Uh, excuse me. I didn't... <laughs> 
What I said was, he, he told me that our house doesn't, first he said, your house doesn't look very good anyway. And then when I questioned him on that, he said, your house is ugly. Oh, no, and what I, I said, what I said was, you are being ugly. I didn't say he didn't look, he looked ugly. I said, you are acting ugly. To say that to a customer? Well, between, your house isn't there. Between your you. house isn't very good looking anyway, and you, your house is ugly. And um, he's, like, and you, you can't. You call your yard him ugly. doesn't look very good. Our yard is the best in the neighbor in the street, and you can ask any of our neighbors. It is. Okay. Well, you, and he you, said your post. He said your mailbox is ugly and falling down and kind of hillbilly looking. It is not. I don't think I heard him say the word hillbilly, but you, I heard well, you call not him hillbilly, ugly. No, I did not call him ugly. I said he was at, saying ugly things. I did not say he was ugly. I don't even know who he is. Steve, he, he's over there crying now. I, you made him cry. Ex excuse me? Because you called him ugly. And No, ma ma I did listen, not call him ugly. Ma'am, he, he is. What? Uh, he is ugly. I, but, like, you know what? He's sensitive about it. I'm not going to... I did not... <laughs> I did not say he was ugly. I said he was saying ugly things. That's he the first the, thing you said to me when we got on the phone. You said he was being ugly. He was being ugly, not that he is ugly. He said some ugly things. Okay, so you just you're just calling to tattle on yourself. What? What's this call regarding? He called and said that you guys are moving all the mailboxes for our street Steve, right don't, in front of our house. Don't, don't cry. Steve, it's fine. She didn't mean it. She meant you're you're acting ugly. Sorry. Does he have to be on the line for this? Oh no, I was just yelling. I was just uh, calling over to him because he's in I, the office. I was. I did not say he was ugly. I have no idea what he looks like. I've never met the man. Oh, for goodness sakes! I said that he was acting ugly, meaning that he said some ugly things to me. In that what he said was, your house is ugly. He said that, your house is ugly. And then he said, well, your house, first thing he said was, your house doesn't look very good anyway. Well, it does. And our yard looks nice. Oh, is this the, the family who were putting the mailboxes in front of your house? Excuse me, what? Uh, are you the, we're, we're putting the, like, he didn't even tell me who's on the phone. Are, are you the ones that were putting those silver mailboxes? Well, I guess so. That's the first we've heard of it. Okay, well that's great. I mean that's going to be no, really convenient. No, we're not. For you. Real, we're not. No, we're not real happy with that. Okay. It's going to take away from the curb appeal of our house. But you won't have to mow that little strip of grass. I in don't. The front. I don't care. We don't mind mowing it. My husband loves doing yard work, and he does a very, oh. very good job of it. And we don't want it there. We're going to have a row of like how many mailboxes in front of our house. Uh, it's going to be 120 to start out with. It's, it's just going to be 120 mailboxes. They're going to be three, three high. You know, three mailboxes high. But eventually, no, excuse me, you can't put that many mailboxes in front of our house. Yeah, but we're also going to put lockers up on top of them probably I this don't... summer. Are you are you kidding me? So, oh, in all, it's going to be about seven feet tall. Is this a joke? No, I wouldn't. We wouldn't kid about this, ma'am. We're, we're doing this feet tall in front of our house. You can't put that in front of a house. We're doing this all over town. It's just to make things more convenient. It's making it more convenient for you. Meanwhile, it's taken away from our property value. Yeah, but the mailbox will be right in front of your house. You can go out there and just get I your mail. I don't care. I don't care. It's right in front of our house now. Nobody puts them in front of a house. You put them on the side. You, no. Where, where exactly? Where exactly are you putting it? Uh, it's going to be in that little strip of grass out in front of your right. house. It's going to start at one edge of your driveway. So be careful backing out. You don't want to hit it. And it's going to go all the way down to your neighbor's driveway. So it's going to... No, it is going to go from our driveway down to our neighbor's driveway. It's eventually going to be seven feet high. No, that is unacceptable. Well, it's only going to be five feet high until summer. Five feet high, tall until summer, and then it's going to be seven feet high. No, that is not acceptable. Not in in front of somebody's house. It's going to take away from our property value. Ma'am, you're making a big deal out of nothing. It's fine. No, I don't think I am. Seven, five feet tall? 
stretched out right in front of our house? Yeah, from no. one edge of the driveway to the other. And the so other. Who do I talk? Who do we talk to about this to not get it done? I, because I we are. Well, like, it's too late at this point. You should have been attending city council meetings and, and voted. Or nobody told us anything about it. Well, you, you got to take an interest in local affairs. You have to, you know, just. You know, read, read the we paper. have to take an interest in local affairs. We should have. Uh, we we knew nothing about this, and so we'll call. This must be a prank call. No, it's not. Come out to our house. Nobody's come to our oh, house to talk to us about that. Why hadn't somebody come to our house to tell us about this? Well, we sent a um, letter, and you know, we talked to no, our next we, door neighbor. No, we have not gotten any letter from you. No, no you probably just thought it was junk mail and threw it out. No, no. Who is your boss? Well, the, the postmaster. He's not here right now. I mean, What's he's, his he's, name? He's getting ready to leave. His name is Chad. Well, I'd like to speak to him. But you know, I'd we, like to speak we, to we talked to your next door neighbor, and um, they I didn't don't care. complain this much. I don't care. Like, let me speak to your your boss. I mean, the the wall is going to be convenient for another reason because you can. I don't your care if it's con- like, yeah, it might be convenient for it. Our, our mailbox is plenty convenient right now. You're going to want to put some lights out there too because it's going to create kind of like a dark, shadowy area for. We don't want it, period. Okay, but period. I'm just saying you can hide your trash cans back there. I, I don't. Back, back behind Our it. trash cans are fine where they are. They're in the garage, and that's none of your business anyway. But let me speak to your boss, please. Ma'am, I just, I pulled up. I, I'm looking at your house on Street View, and you say your, yeah. your husband's really good with the lawn, but to be honest, this lawn looks kind of scraggly. Who are you? Are, is this a joke? No, I Our would, yard look. What number? What number do you have? What's I, our address? I wouldn't joke about this. Like you need True Green or something, because like the what? What I address is what? What address are you looking at? One clean. No, it's it's uh, our yard does not look scraggly. It's always the best on the street. Well, Everybody says so. Maybe, and who are you to say that? Oh maybe, my goodness! No, I'm just maybe it was a bad day when Street You took the photo. So I'm, I'm just looking on the internet. I would, I'd like you. to speak to the postmaster, please. But like, there's these, the, like they look like I would weeds, like to speak like, to the postmaster, right please. there where the little telephone thing comes up in the front. There's like this. I little... would like. No, you're looking at the wrong house. No, it's it's diff. it's. Is I... it? Does it have a big porch all the way across the front? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. All the way across the front, because a lot of them have porches, but ours goes all the way across. Ma'am, is is your address the one? Yes, it is. I would like to speak to your boss, please. The postmaster, please, right now. Okay. Yeah, let, let me... Chad! Oh, my God. Just, just a minute. It's not. It's from the it's phone. It's the U.S. Postal Service. Five feet high from our driveway to the next driveway. Hello, this is Chad. Hello? Hey, it's Chad. Is this a real person? Of course. Chad who? I, look, what did you say to Carol? Because she's crying. She's crying now. Because, first of all, is was it Steve called and said that they're putting a five feet row of a hundred and something mailboxes yeah. in front of our house? Yeah, Steve's crying too because well, you of, called him ugly. No, I did not. Is this a prank call? That I did not call him ugly. Well, he says you called him ugly. You, well, I did not. I've been consoling a, him while you yell at Carol. I did not call him ugly. I told him he was acting ugly because he told me that my house is ugly and our yard is ugly. And our mailbox is ugly. He's the one that said that. And well, all I said was you are acting, uh, saying ugly things is what I said. I feel and then like... She I, I don't she know. told me that she's looking at a picture of our house and it's oh good. Oh, it's Who, what kind of what kind of professional people say things like that to people? Well, I think she was just stating matter of factly. Like I, I, she, I, I see it on her screen right now. This, this yard looks. You look like hobos live there. Did you just say that to me? Well, I'm just saying. What is your name? What is your name? This is Chad. Chad who? Chad McChatterson. Oh, uh, this is a prank call. What? What are you talking about? Prank call. Who makes prank calls? <laughs> 
Broadcasting from the PLA Situation Room in Roy, New Mexico. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Now it's time. On Prank Call Nation. Cactus, 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 cactus. I ain't playing games. Cactus, 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 cactus. Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus, 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 this cocksucker. Cactus, 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 cactus. You've got to be crap on my ball. Cactus, 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 cactus. It's going to be a fuck job to edit. Cactus, 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 cactus. You think a tracer can stop me? Hey there, everyone. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. I'm your host, Brad. This is episode number 814, and it's brought to you by Mother Yaya, Halfalfa. I now know how to pronounce that one, Halfalfa. Panda Bananas, Red Beard, and Carter Hayes 6969. I recently learned that that's the Carter Hayes that beat the crap out of Drake Goodman with the golf club and stole his identity. You know the one. Anyway, they all support us over at patreon.com slash phone losers, which is exactly what you should be doing. So you get an extra show every week. So, hey, I've had some people make some new songs for me and they're just kind of sitting in my notes here because everything is just a complete mess since the vinyl record stuff. I don't know how to explain that, but my email is just destroyed right now. I need to go through and delete a bunch of things and write a bunch of things into tracking software you know to track how much i've made from the vinyl so i can pay my taxes it's a mess but is what i'm saying is that that's kind of affecting my ability to find anything in my email right now so some of you have sent me music recently and some drops and some other things and i haven't gotten to it yet because of my email being a mess I'm going to try and get that all cleaned up this week, hopefully. And I'm also going to send out one more batch of vinyl records and coins. Probably just one more before I leave on my corporate sabbatical. But then after that, you guys are going to have to wait for an entire month for anything to arrive that you order from me. There's going to be a meetup this year just outside of Chicago. It's on September 9th and 10th. And it's a weird meetup. Hopefully you can find us there. It's going to be at the Vintage Computer Fair Midwest. Is that what all those initials stand for? VCFMW.org. Apparently we will have a table there, but also we'll just kind of be walking around everywhere looking at stuff. So come and find us. I don't know how many people are going to be there because there's no event page or anything like that. I mean, there is something over rogueserver.net, but it just kind of tells you where it's going to be and when it's going to be. And all I know is I'm going to be there and some other people are going to be there. So come and see us. Say hello. I am so bored. There's nothing to do. Tell me about it. Hey, I know. Let's crank call people in the past. Huh? I just got the Crank Prank Time Phone. Crank Prank, Crank Prank Time Phone. New from Zasbro, it's Crank Prank Time Phone. I just dial a random number on the keypad, enter a date and year on the developerator, and... Wow! Someone from the past is on the line. Hello? Is your refrigerator running? Well, then you better go catch it. Phone. What? Uh, hi. It's the year 1973, right? Could I speak with alcoholic, please? <laughs> Crank Break Time Phone comes with Devilibrator, Antimatter Fusion Cone, and 30 Blaine HF Watt triggers. Warning, Crank Break Time Phone is for entertainment purposes only. Making anything other than crank calls to the past could affect the present and in your existence. Crank Break Time Phone is not intended for use by autos. I got some interesting numbers here from Berserker, who says, Hello, Brad. I love your shows. Especially when you piss people off. This is a list of rain checks for my local liquor store. The manager's name is Tom. You can impersonate him on your callbacks and say some wacky shit. I don't even know what a rain check is. That's something I remember my mom talking about in the 80s. A ticket given for later use when a sports event or outdoor event. No, a coupon issued to a customer by a store guaranteeing that the sale item is out of stock and... Okay, so it's like people that want to buy stuff for the sale price, but they're out of it. So they have to get a rain check. That's weird. That's something I've never done before. Because I ain't no damn hobo. So these are all from last week. And I assume he doesn't really tell me. He says it's his local liquor store. And I don't think he works there, but it looks like he's just going up to an area where they put these rain checks up on a wall or something. And he's snapping pictures of them. He sent me seven photos. So here's one from the 28th. I think that was, I don't know, like seven, it was a week ago. Hi, John. Hey, John. It's Tom from the liquor store. Oh, yeah. Hi, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. From 
Yeah, did you get that that Pedro Morales gold? No. I don't, okay, it's here, but there's a small problem. Um, it's it's uh it's several um pallets stacked on top of each other, so you're gonna need to bring a forklift for two cases. Yeah, because the cases the cases are on the the bottom pallet, and we just kind of stacked them up in here. And I I know like, you probably don't have a forklift, but do you have one of those uh pump, you know those little carts so you can pump the the pallets up and uh, you know like move them around. Mm, no. Okay, you're gonna have to come in and just remove everything off of this top pallet. I'll give you a ladder, and uh, then we'll get you know I'll help. But then maybe I don't want to. I don't want to get up on any ladder. I'm 68 years old, and uh, yeah, not a tall ladder. Uh, I'm, I'm talking like a four foot ladder, just to get up a, a, up high a little bit so you can reach the second pallet. I mean, come on. Do you want this Pedro Morales gold or not? It's a good price. Well. <laughs> I mean, seventeen ninety eight. You're, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to, you know, take all that stuff off from on top and put. Don't, don't you put that in your inventory? Yeah, eventually, but you know, we don't need to right away. They they just stack the pallets in the wrong order, so you need to get your ass well, down here and start unstacking this top pallet, so we can get your Pedro Morales gold. Well, I'm not in that much of a hurry. Why don't you call me when you get uh, down? Get get down. There. Yeah, but we don't want all this shit in our store. You need to get your shit out of here. Is what I'm trying to say. I mean, I'm sorry to curse, but you know, like, you need to get your shit out of here. Do you have a forklift of some sort? Um, I'm just aghast here, Tom. A ghast. I mean, yeah. What a weird word. I've never used that in my life. I got to bring a forklift to a liquor store to buy liquor. Well, either a forklift. Yeah, I guess probably a forklift. Yeah, just a little one. We'll let, no. we'll let you in the back door is with this it. A, is this a joke? Oh, no. Are you playing I would, on me? I would not kid, sir. I'm a Christian. You know me. You know me. No, I sort don't. Of. Well, I mean, Adam took your uh, order for the yeah for the Pedro. Yeah, uh, right. my my name is Tom, though. I'm the manager. Just just get in here and get your shit out of here. Can you do that tonight? I've got two people. Well, I I need them to come in here and get their shit out of here, so I can do inventory easier. You just had two cases. You're a good. You're you're a good Christian, and you're telling me to come to get my shit out of your store. Yes. Well, that, that's just me being assertive. That's not really a whole lot to do with Christianity. And I got to bring a forklift over there to do it? Well, I was just saying I'd appreciate it. Uh, if not, you're going to have to move all of this this whole pallet. Service 101, please. Bobcat Service 101. Can you tell that? What, what is that? Who's Where are you at? Pardon? Huh? I'm sorry? Oh, I don't know. I heard a lady in the background. It was weird. I didn't like it. So you're going to be here tonight then? No, I cannot come tonight. I have plans. Oh, what plans? What are you doing? Well, is it really any of your business? Well, it's a little, you know, I was just making conversation and now you can't even tell me what the plans are. So seems, well, why seems, should I have to tell you what my plans are? Well, it seems like you're, 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 just, demanding. you're making it up. Like just say you're, 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 you don't feel like it or you're lazy or whatever. You have to make yeah, it. Yeah, I'm. I don't feel like it. I'm lazy, Tom. Okay, so tomorrow then? Maybe. Okay. Why don't you Why don't you call me when it gets down to my two cases? I I can't bring a forklift over there. Yeah. I'm not going to be move, move, moving around any boxes. Uh, I'm not going to be lifting anything. You could use. Uh, you know, you could stand to lose a few pounds. We all can. Like, I'm just going to put you up on a ladder, and you're just going to be lifting up uh, a bunch of cases. You can hand them down this to me. Gotta be a, this has got to be a joke. John, I'm a Christian. I don't care what you are, but this has got to be a joke. So you don't care that I'm not. You should care that I'm a Christian. I'm a nice, honest uh, alcohol store owner. 
Who do you answer to, Tom? Jesus Christ. Who's your next step up in your line chain? Of oh, command? no, I, I run I run the whole store here. I mean, we've got corporate, but, you know, I, I don't listen to those people. I do what I want. You, this has got to be a joke. Why are you saying it's a joke? Sir, just, just come down here and, and, mm-hmm. and get your liquor. It's it's just, you got to get it from the bottom. I can't even see him down there in the bottom. Well, now I can see him. Like, I, I pulled out one of the, the, the cases on the edge, and, yep, it's back there. But I can't reach back there and get it. And besides, it'll probably collapse the whole thing if I do stuff like that. All right, but I'm supposed to? Yes, please. Get out of here and get your shit out of here. Uh, let me talk. Can I talk? Uh, I'm sorry. Your first name is Tom. And who took my order? Uh, Was that Adam? Adam. Yeah. Can I talk to him? Adam? Uh, yeah. he, he doesn't come until later tonight. Well, if I call there, can I talk to him? Yeah. Yeah, he'll be around. I I just don't believe what I'm hearing. What? That you, I have, mean, to, I've, I've, you have to I've, be a little I've mad? Been in, I've, I've done this in the past. And they call me and they say they're here. Come and, come and get them. But they don't say, hey, bring a forklift. Or hey, you got to unload load some other pellets. Or that, that was just a they're, they're 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 way in the back, and I don't want to do it, but I want you to do it. You don't have to bring a forklift. I was just hoping you happen to have one. It's fine. You can just do some manual some manual labor for once in your life. What do you mean for? How do you even know what I do? Just, well, I don't. I'm just you. you just sound kind of lazy. So we're gonna put you up on a ladder. Shouldn't take it'll, it's going to take like less than an hour to empty this whole pallet off. Uh, I want the, uh, the name and number of your I, supervisor. I, I, this, I just, this is, I, this I, is unheard of. This call uh, and what you're asking me to do. Well, I just and think you're the, swearing. You're, and you're swearing, sir. You're getting a, a discount price here, and I think customers should pitch in for that. Like you wanted the discount price so oh, much, bo- we had to write you a oh, boy. a rain check. Now you don't even want to right. work. You don't even want to work for it. Tom, wait. Is can it, I is possibly it, get the, the name of of anyone that you answer to? Uh, Chris Tompkinson is the C, CEO uh, of the company. Did Chris, you, who? Yeah. Did you have a problem with the name Rain Checks? It sounded like you were going to object to that. No, but I've done it before, and oh. they call me and say it's here. Come and get it, and they. And I go there, and they bring it out out of the uh, back room and load it into uh, my Suburban, and I drive, I pay them, and I drive them away. Oh, what year Suburban oh. do you have? 2018. Nice. What, 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 what difference does it make? Oh, just making, you brought it up, so I was just making conversation and asking a follow-up question. I, and I'm just saying, nice. Yeah, I like Suburbans. <sighs> this has got to be a joke, Tom. Well, I, every time you say that, that insults my Christianity. It's like you're saying oh, ha- hail. It's like you're saying hail Satan to me. Um, who's the store manager at the, across the street? That uh, across the alley at the store? That store. What what store are you talking about? Well, this is is this correct? Yeah, yeah, liquor. You're hanging out in alleys. You're, you're hanging out in alleys. The alley. Who, who's the manager of the supermarket? Which which supermarket? Because there's one. There's one in, on the left. The, and the one. The, the supermarket. Yeah. Are you talking about the laundry? Or the Sherman Williams? I'm talking about the store. Uh, I don't know. You sound drunk or something. Oh, the, the foods grocery store, right? Next door. Next to the Chinese buffet. This has got to be a joke. Why would you say that? Um, seven times. Because of what you're telling me. What? No, there is a Chinese buffet next door. 
but it's kind of connected to the uh, the foods grocery store. Where do you, where do you work at? It's none of your damn business. Well, I just keep hearing noises in the background. I heard I heard like a shutdown noise before I heard an let's intercom do, lady. Hey, 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 let's do this. Let's just cancel my rain check. Oh, and I'll no. Never walk, never, never walk into no, your store again. No, no. These, these are, this is like a contract. You have to come in. Um, you didn't pay already, did you? No. Damn. And I'm not, I'm not going Damn. to pay, and I'm not going to pick them up, and I'm not going to move anything to what? pick them up. Just because you're. You call me when, when, when you get down, when you get down to them, Okay. Uh, and I'm in, I'm in, I'm in no hurry. You're just cause you're afraid of some manual labor. I mean, come on. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a lot of, it's just picking up. Case. Hey, hey, Chris, Chris, come uh, in here. Uh, obviously you can pick up a case, a case of beer. If you can, you know, you can, you can pick up a case hey, of these. I, I, I got a, I, I got a fellow I work with here. All right. He just walked into my office, Tom. Yes, sir. And tell him, I, and I, I ordered uh, two cases of tequila on a rain check program over. At tell Tom, you tell Chris what you what what you expect of me. Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, I, I'm not totally sure what John's going on about. I was calling to save him money on his car insurance. I'm with Progressive Insurance, and he's talking mm-hmm. he's talking about beers and drinking and driving, and I I don't know what's going on. I'm just a telemarketer. You're a telemarketer, and two minutes ago you said you were the manager of liquor. Oh no! Come over and- no, I, I think you're mistaken, sir. And he and he told me could I bring a forklift over to liquor because my boxes are down at the bottom, and I got to move some uh, pallets. Sir, you're talking and you're talking. That's crazy talk. I, I'm I'm just I was I was trying to set you up with an insurance plan for your home or car. Hey, hey, oh. go, go, go away, sir. You're nuts. Oh, I'm nuts. You're the one going on about some kind of case of beer. There, he's gone now. That's pretty good for the very first call. I thought he would have already picked it up by now because it's been a full seven days, but maybe it just actually hasn't come in yet. Also, it's pretty awesome that Chris probably thinks he's crazy now. They're going to start encouraging him to retire soon. So, okay, time to do the second one. This guy's name is Thomas. Oh, this one's even older. This is from July 14th. It's like two and a half weeks. And it's one case of Christian Bros. What the hell is Christian Bros? I'm looking it up. Christian Brothers Brandy. Never heard of it. By the way, these first couple ideas I'm trying are from Mr. Biggs. I showed him a picture of one of these rain checks. And I'm like, what can I do? And he typed out several ideas here. So let's see if this guy answers. Oh God, both of our names are Tom. But I'm the superior, Tom. Hello. Oh, hello, Thomas. Yeah. Hello. It's Tom from the liquor store. Wow, you sound like crap. But your your phone's cutting out really bad. Oh, okay. It sucks. What can I do? What What are you doing? Like wandering around inside elevators, or <laughs> I'm in the garage in my brother's place, and we're. Uh... Wiring some things as boat. Oh, well, get out, because I was trying to ask you a question. How are you doing now? What? Yeah. I'm out. I can't... I'm out just... Oh, okay. Can you can you climb up a ladder or go on the roof or in a tree? <laughs> okay. it, does your phone always sound like this? Uh, it sounds good in my end. Well, yeah. Sounds like shit on my end. You should, okay. You should hear it. Wait for me. Hey, um, we got we got... Uh, this Christian Bros. This one case of Christian Bros. I I picked up a case. Yeah, from you. Yeah, did you drink it yet? Nope. Oh dear! Thank goodness! Thank the baby Jesus! We we gave you the dis- d- display one. Uh, that's for when people do beer runs, and if uh, some hooligan comes in here and he tries to. Uh, you know, just run off with a case of Christian bros like hooligans sometimes do. Oh, okay. uh, it, it would explode. It would explode paint in their car. Like, you know, like if they were to rob a bank. Okay. 
So, you're so gonna, you, what do you want me to do? You want me to bring it back over? Yeah, you're going to want to bring it back over. I don't know why it didn't. It, you, you didn't open up the case or anything? I didn't open it. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, yeah, you, you should. Um, we'll, we'll trade that in for. Uh, for what? Why did my hold on? Well, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we'll trade that in for a, a real case of Christian Bros. Uh, this is your, your an extra one, huh? And an extra problem. An extra one. Oh, sh- oh, oh. I'm sorry. Your, your phone's cutting out really bad, and it's hard to hear you when you say that. I thought you'd say that. Uh, okay, I am. I can't do it today. Okay, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Just, just don't drink any. I mean, don't open them up. Cause you you don't want to have a like red paint sprayed all over the place. It never comes. Okay, okay. It never comes out. It, it, you'd you'd be you'd have red all over your face and hands for over a week. It's bank robbery quality stuff. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. What's that? Okay, I'm tied up right now, so I'm. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, also you're tied up, and also your phone sounds like crap. It's a brand new phone. It's been only two weeks old. So mm. it's got to be the line that's coming. Yeah. I, are you on a landline or a cell phone? Later. Or a cordless phone? Oh, he hung up. I don't know what his answer was to that. Pretty sure it was a cell phone. Yeah, I wasn't expecting him to have picked it up already, so I wasn't able to use Big's ideas on that one. I had to use my own lame ideas. So that's two out of two that have answered, and I thought they were okay. Oh, man, they're getting older. This one's from 629 of this year. It was sold by Lisa, and the customer's name is Trish, and she wants some black box cab. I don't know why, but I want to type that in. I don't know my alcohol's black box cabernet. So she's probably picked that up if this is, you know, like an entire month ago. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. And Trish isn't picking up. Trish? Oh, what the hell? She picked up, just sat there like a creep, and then she hung up on me. She's probably one of those dummies that says hello and then picks up, and then blames me for not responding. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. is not available. What a dummy. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Can't even record to her name To leave a callback right. number, press 5. Trish, pick up the phone. I'm calling you from the liquor store. Uh, like we sold you some Black Box Cabaret. Uh, this is Tom. I, I just had a quick question. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Jesus, calm down. Okay. Please answer your phone. I'm going to call back about six, seven more times. Six or seven, eight, nine more times. Ten, eleven. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, all right. I'm going to call back. Trish. Trish. Trish, it's Tom. Trish. Hello. From the liquor store. Lisa ordered you. Oh, hi. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You were just sitting there like a creep. That was weird. No, but I, th- I didn't call you, and I'm not the one that wants anything from the liquor store. Well, I thought I was going crazy or something, because you, you weren't saying anything. I thought my phone was broken. Oh, that was a mess. Like, you know that cabaret you ordered from us uh, about a month ago? I didn't order anything. I'm sorry. You have the wrong number. Well, it's Trish, right? Lisa ordered it for you. It wasn't me. No, no, no. Three, goodbye. three black box cabarets, you dumb ho. Goodbye, goodbye. Listen goodbye. here, How lady. Do hey, don't you dare hang up. Why are you pretending you didn't buy anything from us? I'm not trying to ruin your reputation or anything. I just, I, I, I had a, I had a dire warning about those black box cabarets. Oh boy, I hope you didn't open them yet. Are you still there, Trish? Trish. Trish, Trish, please let me know. I'm I'm just informing you about the recall. That's all. No big deal. 
But if you didn't buy anything from us, I guess nothing to worry about. Are you hitting buttons? Trish, why are you being a total bitch? I mean, you know, we're just, I'm just trying to tell you about the recall. That's all. Trisha, 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 Trisha. Trish. Damn you. Trish. Why are you being a weirdo? You're, you're creeping me out again. You're creeping me out. Okay, she finally hung up. I don't know what that's about. Maybe she's with somebody who who's not aware of her drinking problem. And I'm totally exposing her lies. Next, we're going to call up Tom. He ordered one case of Jim Beam on 721. So it's a slightly more recent one. Yo. Yo, Tom. What's up? My name's Tom, too. Yeah, hey, you're lucky about I'm a little, little, little. Did you mumble something? I said you're lucky, lucky person. Oh, that didn't clear anything up. Uh, you know how you ordered, like, I'm calling from the liquor store? Yep. And did you pick up that case of Jim Beam yet? Nope, not yet. Okay. Uh, I just... I should probably tell you, we had it the whole time. Yeah. You just didn't ask nicely for it. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, so that's why they pretended they didn't have any, and then you went and did the whole rain check thing. Yep. But uh, it's actually here. It's been here the whole time. Okay. Um, whatever. Um, stop in. I, I actually live uh, like an hour out. Can I stop in within the next week or two, and you'll still honor it? Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, we pretty much always have Jim Beam Black. Uh, we don't run out of that stuff. So if they tell you that they don't have it, uh, they're lying, just like they were last time. I hope you didn't come okay. out here just for that. I actually did. It was on oh, That's shoot. kind of my favorite. But that's kind hey, of. I got a lot of different stuff. I got a lot of different stuff too. Not a big deal. Yeah, that's true. Also, when you were oh. here, you went down into the basement. And you're not really supposed yeah. to go down there unsupervised. I was I was upstairs actually. Oh no, you went in oh. like sort of where the back room is, and there's the door that goes downstairs into the basement. And we just keep some of our inventory down there. I don't know why you'd be poking around down there though. For that's you know that's an employee. That's obviously an employee's only area. I know the door wasn't marked, yeah. but come on, don't be a dick. It was a restroom, right? Uh, no, not the restroom. The, it was the basement. Yeah, I gotcha. The basement looks different than a restroom. Well, there was a toilet in there, and uh, if that wasn't a toilet, I did something funny in there. No, well, did you have to go into the basement first to use the toilet? No. Yeah, that's because there's no toilet in the basement. That's a different yep, door. Yep. But, I mean, you should have realized when you opened the door, this isn't the bathroom. And maybe yelled up at the... The cashier, like, hey, which door? Yeah, I needed a, I needed a key to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the same key works on the basement as the one that works on the restroom. So, quit making up excuses. Quit being a dick. Okay. He was kind of boring anyway. Looks like we got three left. We got an Amanda. I'm impressed that the first four people have answered. I thought I'd get maybe two people to answer if I'm lucky, and then I would just go back to the list someday. But no, they're all going to answer today. Especially Amanda. She's totally just about to pick up. Oh, she was getting some White Claw. 10 slash 12 packs. Hello? Hello, Amanda? Yes. Um, we, th- this, this is, this is, uh, oh boy. This is Tom over at the... <laughs> I see that was... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ordered this... You ordered this um this white claw from us. Hello? You do you remember ordering white claw? Amanda? Oh, sorry. Sorry, my mute was on. Ah. I did and I had my mom pick it up, but I'm wondering if she might have I don't know what she did. Oh, well th- this flavor of white claw that you ordered? 
the specific okay. flavor uh it's outlawed and like what? is there any way you can come by the liquor store right now the the cops are here and they want to talk to you excuse me the cops are here and they want to talk to you ab- about what? uh just for ordering like uh, an outlawed type of uh flavor and of alcohol Oh no, I wouldn't kid, ma'am. I wouldn't kid about this. Um, I am in Detroit Lakes. So I do not live in. Oh, okay. And I, well, what do you mean by oh? Well, it's like a peyote flavor of White Claw that you ordered. And didn't uh, know they even had that. They're saying that you should have known not to order that one. I've never heard of it before. Well, I mean, Lisa wrote it down for you <laughs> when you did this uh, rain check so thing. Would have been, would have been number one. Number one. Yep. Well, this says Lisa on it. I don't know what Le- who Lisa. Is. What do you mean number one? What are you talking about? Like, like peeing or pooping? You have a good day, sir. Well, what are you talking about? Like the number one. I thought maybe she was talking about the employee number because one of the employees just writes number 88 on all of his, but the other employees just seem to write their names. And that was another Biggs idea, but I don't think I did too. I mean, come on, White Claws outlawed. I didn't think that one through. I basically ruined that one. Okay, next. Thomas. Another Thomas. Wait. Oh, this is the same guy. Oh, this is the Christian Bros guy. I've already done this one. Damn it, Berserker, you're getting my hopes up by double submitting these. So we actually only have one left. His name's Tony. Uh, Jim Bean Black. That's what that other Tom ordered. But it's a different phone number, so we're okay. Oh, there's no date on this one, so I'm not going to know if he picked it up or not. There's no employee name. I think they just had Tony fill it out himself. Oh, hey, Tony. Hello? Tony! Yes. Hey, Hi. it's Tom from the yes. liquor store. Hey, did you pick up your um, Jim Beam Black yet? No. No. Okay. This is the first call I got. Last I got a call said it was going to be delayed until sometime in August. Oh, no. No, that was a lie. Um, oh. That, uh, did Jerry call you? Yeah. I guess I didn't get his name. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, it, ca- he, it, it came in, but the, okay. this, guy, this guy came in and outbid you on it. Oh, bid me? Yeah, yeah, I'll bid you. Because you were going to pay twenty eight ninety eight for it? Well, I took a rain check on the price you had. So yeah, there but... There be no bidding involved. He did a rain check, and he outbid you on it. He said, he, he's like, if you give me Tony's, I'll give you $35. Plus well, tax. Well, that still means I get two. Yeah, well, no, we have the... A rain written... check is a rain check. Sir... It, like he outbids you on it though, like so you're not going to get any. But there's no, I'm, there's no bidding on a rain I, check. I'm rain s- check is what you got on there. I know, That's but why you give out rain check. We were just trying to spruce things up a little bit around here, and we were letting people bid against other people's rain checks. You know, just as like a fun thing to do. And well, it's not, well, as long as I get my two bottles at twenty eight bucks, I'm, it's, I'll be happy as hell. Oh, twenty eight ninety eight plus tax. Yeah. Yeah. But, but also, um, I mean, he paid thirty-five per bottle plus tax. Yeah. So you're but not that's, you're not getting that's anything. That's the issue. Look, you can argue with me all you want, but they're gone. Well, so why do you have, why do you give out rain checks? Well, because and we, why wasn't I informed on it? We didn't think that anyone was bidding on my stuff. We didn't think he would have. Oh, we tried to call you that night. You well, didn't pick. You know what I'm thinking. You didn't. Well, we just we know we're assuming and stuff. But we we tried well, to call you, you that know night. What that means. Oh, don't you even say, don't even say that. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> well, like, like, that's exactly c- come up with something that's not from the '80s. You fucking yeah, idiot. Well, you come up with something. But well, anyway, who's your manager? Thirty-five dollars is more than twenty-nine dollars. Who's your manager? Give me your manager's name. Oh well, it's Chris Tompkinson. Works at the corporate office. I'm the manager. This is Tom. Okay. Um, I want your. I want the corporate office. Oh, you gonna get me in trouble? Yes, I am. Especially after what you just called me. Oh wait, what did I call you? I I was. Yeah, well, I you're heard... going to hear about it from your boss. Okay, I mean, you, you threw me off with that whole, you know what it means when you assume. <laughs> well, well, it... that's your issue, not mine. Okay, well, you're the I one. I went in it with good faith. He's the one who offered it up. He called me up, said, hey. I know, that's you know, usually how it works. Everybody was late on it. Look, look here, buddy. Oh, so I was smart enough. 
Okay. So what, what's your uh, what's your boss's name? Uh, Chris Tompkinson. I mean, he's the CEO of of the liquor store. But uh, you know, like why why don't you just uh, you know you know just come back some other time? We'll probably how do you spell it? We'll probably have some Jim Beam Black for you. Chris Tom Tompkinson. Yeah. Yeah. Tompkinson. Yeah. Tompkinson. In is a mnemonic. And your name is? And your name is? Uh, it's still Tom. No relation. Tom what? Yeah. Tom. Tom uh-huh. last name? Uh, w a t t. I'm the Tom manager. Tom what? I'm the t- I'm the manager. Well, you already do that because you said it. Manager at. More- yep. Okay. You wouldn't happen to have uh, Chris's direct line, do you? Uh, I do, but, you know, you're being kind of a douche canoe, so I'm not going to give I'm it to gonna, you. Yeah, okay, that's just another thing I'm going to tell him about, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's another thing you can tattle on me, as if you're in grade school. Yep, yep. I hope you have a I mean, lot of I don't fun. Know why you, I don't know why you you go along and you give these rain checks out and, and you don't honor them. I, well, I was going to honor it, but you got outbid. Thirty-five dollars. There's no such thing as an outbidding on a rain check. And we tried to call you that night so you could bid. Maybe I have no record of it. You could have tried to bid like forty-nine dollars or no something. No record of it. Yeah, right. You probably deleted the. There's co- no record of it. You probably deleted your call log. No. Well, you can still go back and look at that too if you want. Oh, well, not if you dele- deleted it. Yes, you can. No, you probably deleted the entries. Yeah. Okay, Tom Watt, manager, Chris Tompkinson. Yeah, Chris Tompkinson. Okay. And he's going to hear about it. Okay, why are you so mad, though? Like, it's an honest mistake. Because I was in there, and for the guy who helped me out was more than helpful. He had said nothing about, about outbidding, nothing about any of this stuff, and it's not a fun thing. And here I am trying to get, get something because I'm going to give him away his gifts. And uh, you guys go, oh, it's all bid. This is a fun thing. Well, it's not a fun thing. Well, it's it's kind of a fun thing for the guy that got it for thirty five bucks. Plus, you know, we made an extra seven dollars on that. Six dollars. Yeah. I, I don't know. But like, um, yeah, just be happy that you're not the guy we accidentally gave the display beer to. He took it home and it, it blew up red all over the place. Well, you know, like one of those bank money exploding die packs. So here's the question here, so, Tom. Some people if have I it better up, than you, is what I'm saying. If I show up, will you honor the rain check? Uh, yeah, when we have it in again, uh, we I could just write you another rain check. It's probably going to be another month. Probably come in September. I'll just yeah, that's what I'll do. Right. I'll just redo your rain check. And and say do not bid against this guy. Well, unless we start opening up bids again. Come on, it's like a fun thing we do. How many places do you know that... <laughs> it's, that m- it's money out of my pocket. That's not a fun thing. Oh, no. We saved you twenty eight ninety eight because now you don't have to buy those two I bottles. Know, I gotta buy the, now i got to buy the more expensive stuff for my, for my family. Oh, no. Yeah. No, just wait for the Jim Beam to come in again. I'll wait for the Jim Beam to come in, but you have to honor that. In, in mid-September. Two, oh, we'll honor it as long bottles. as... Two bottles. Yeah, two bottles. I, I've got that written down. And as, as long okay. as um, as long as nobody outbids you on it, I'll say they have to outbid well, you by at least ten bucks because that guy only bid thirty five dollars. I'll. Uh, he was very. Oh, so how come Jim Beam? How come it's so hard to get Jim Beam in? Uh, I, like people just really like it. It's it's a uh, just just flying off the shelves. It's popular okay. with the kids. Popular with the kids. Yeah, well, it is. Kids are, kids are mixing that stuff. They're supposed to be drinking it neat. Yeah, they they always have their uh, older-looking friends come in and try to buy it. Oh, that way. Mm-hmm. That's no good. Okay, why don't you uh, tattle on me about that, too, since I take bribes well, I'm not from those tattle. kids. I'm not going to say anything about that. Okay. It's, I will, I if, will, if you tell I'll, them I take bribes, I'll deny it. I'm not going to tell you to take bribes. I'm going to... Uh, stop in there, and uh, who's gonna believe a high schooler? Check check you out. Okay, that's uh, I'm I'm straight, sir, but that's fine. I'm used to All it. Right. 
All right. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you for uh, being so understanding. Yeah, well, I don't know if I was understanding, but I guess I just, there's a, there's a reason you do rain checks, and there's a reason people say, yes, I want the rain check. It's not to be outbid. Do you do rain checks at other places, or is it just this liquor store? I do store? rain checks all the time when they're oh. out. That's the thing I, I ask for, and they always honor them. This is oh. the first time I've ever heard of anybody getting an outbid on a rain check. <laughs> like, for example, where else have you done a rain check? Like Long John Silver's or? No, at any clothing store, any, oh. anybody that has a sale, they run out of stuff. Weird. Okay. Didn't know this well, is still. That's not weird. That's standard practice. I didn't know this is still a thing. Like uh, I've never, I've, I've never used a rain check before, but corporate makes me All do right. it. I, I just like, I'm trying to talk them out of it. I'm like, this is dumb. I'm just going to turn this into a, an auction. No. All right. Are you still going to tattle on me? So, well, I mean, why, so that I guess you still haven't answered. Why is that Jim Beam not in stock every week? Uh, it's a hot seller. We, we keep ordering it. Uh, you know, there's supply issues, supply chain issues. Yeah. There, there's a buzzword I can throw at you and shut you up with. All right. Hey, Tony. Uh, Tony. Yes. I love you. I'm going to stop in sometime next week without you, without any notice, and I'm going to try to meet you. <laughs> okay. You're not uh, going to punch me in the uh, face, well, are you? I'm sick no, of that. No, I just want to see you. Okay, I'm sick of getting punched in the face. I'm just asking. Okay. All right. All right, I love you. Bye. Um, please say it back. You're making it weird. No, I'll leave it hanging there until I meet you. Are you going to say it to me in person? Yep. If it, if it warrants it. If you come in here and you're like, I'm Tony. Surprise, motherfucker. I'm going to kiss you on the lips. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> oh, I am. I'm going to I'm gonna go in for the embrace. All right. All right. I'll protect myself. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye. I love you. Wow. I completely turned that one around. He was going to tattle on me, but now he's just going to come into the store and we're going to make out a little bit. That's good news. I should have asked him if he filled out his own rain check because his is the one with no employee name and no date on it. I could have told him we fired Lisa because of that, but oops, nope, it was just him filling it out. He got an innocent girl fired. That was another Biggs idea. He pretty much just took over this entire episode with his ideas. I'd say more than half of the ideas today were from Mr. Biggs and they were pretty good ones. Try not to get a big head over it, Mr. Biggs. I'm going to call the liquor store. Oh, wait, what am I saying to the liquor store? I should have thought this through. Liquors. Hey, is this Lisa? It is. Hey, Lisa. Uh, I'm, I, I got a call. I got a call from Tony, I believe. Hi. Okay. Uh, he said that um, my, uh, my pallet of liquor came in. Okay, we don't and, have anybody here by the name of Tony. Oh, Tom. Not Tony. Silly me. Tom. Okay. Yeah, so are the, the pallets are really there? He, he was being pretty erratic. I, I, um, I have no idea what pallets he would be talking about. Oh, he said they're stacked uh, two or three pallets high, and I need to bring a ladder and help him unload it. Mm, so I'm no. going gonna, gonna to come in. I'll help, but I don't have a ladder. What? Do you have a ladder there? No. What was your name? Uh, my name is Kevin Mitnick. Minnick? Mitnick. Mitnick. Okay. Yeah, but I go by Tony. <laughs> okay. I don't know anything about any pallets that Tom might have called about, so hmm. can I get your number and I'll have him call you right back? Yeah. Uh, just look on the damn caller ID and there it is. I don't have the caller ID right hooked what? up. What? It's not hooked up? No. no. Do you guys pay for it? I, I have no idea. Oh, I mean, like, it'd be silly not to hook it up if you're paying okay. for it. Yeah. Did you want to give me your phone number? I guess. Uh, 218-6969. All right. Thank you. And when's he going to call back then? 
Um, I will let him know that you called as soon as he gets off the phone. He said he was at the store. Oh, he is there? Yeah, but as soon as he gets off the phone, I'll have him call you. Who's he talking to? Find out. I have no idea. I'm busy. I've got a line waiting for customers. Here, oh, but so. guess what? I, I called first, and you know what? Like, I was, I'm basically okay. before them in line. All right. Well, I got to um, go, but you, thank you. Just, I'll let Tom know. Just run back in the back with the phone. And, well, that was an incredibly boring final bus, but maybe Tom will call me back. That really sounds like a busy liquor store. Anyway, thank you, Berserker, for all of those rain check numbers. Other listeners, I hope you will let me know if I'm weird for not knowing that rain checks are still a thing. Next, I'm going to find out that people probably still do layaways somewhere. Didn't Walmart eliminate those when Kmart disappeared? I'm probably wrong. Anyway, it's time for voicemails. Get ready for so many voicemails. Hey, Brad, this is Mano One. First of all, thank you so much for everything you do. Again, you're amazing. Oh, yeah. And second of all, I heard this is actually a number uh, we can all call to check uh, to get you to rate the quality of our Bluetooth in our car. No. So please rate the quality. A E O U. Check, check. Thank you for rating it from uh, 1 to 10. I uh, sure. appreciate it. Bye bye. I'll give that one a 9. It sounded better than that guy from earlier this week. But I can still hear a little bit of road noise. And that's the last Bluetooth check I'm ever doing, ever. No more Bluetooth checks. Don't do it. I'm just not going to play your voicemail. That's not what you want, is it? Hey, Brad. It's next door, Nick. Hey, Nick. And uh, I'd like you to bring back the spinning bell logo on the next Phone Losers YouTube video. Okay. Upload. Uh, also, I'd I like don't know to- if I can, because that's something that worked with a different video software package maybe there's a way to do it on this one i'll look into it because i missed the spinning bell thing i saw that the other day on an old prank single video and i want that back if i can figure out how to import it you could bring back the old cactus intro for the next snowplow show why and uh, also i there's a lot of them why would i bring that back when i have amazing music by joe devita and vista blue and all these other random listeners that make amazing things why would i use my crappy cactus intro you should many next more next door numbers the best part is is you know my neighbors don't know who is doing it and I actually just passed through the dick mailbox house so you know Dick Mailbox Keep House. entertained with your maliciousness. Everybody loved the Dick Mailbox idea, so good job on that one. Hey, Brad. It's Teen Wolf Jesus. Hey. hey, I just wanted to compliment you. I just listened to uh, your I show love compliments. today about putting listening devices, and it's fucking amazing. I have no idea, like, how uh, that, that hotel call where you pretend to be in the electrical room, you kept them going, you got them clapping, and then, like, you got, you, you, you pretended like you were having a conversation with a hotel guest. At the same time, she shut her power off. Oh, yeah. It was just beautiful. So I just wanted to compliment you for that. You shoot more of these calls. They're great. I will. I I did those last year, though. Didn't I? Yeah, because that's where I got the idea from. I did very little of them, though, I think. And I need to do more. I love the concept of tattoo shops, just because uh, you would think that'd be a place where they don't want listening devices. Party stores would also be great. Um, Yeah. So anyway, oh, shit. And one more. Car dealership. If you pretended that you're from a competing car dealership and you put a listening device in, you can really get some people pissed. Okay. But anyway, thanks, Brad, for everything. I uh, hope you're having a great day. I'll try to remember that because, yeah, car dealerships, those places usually have some real characters working for them. Hey, Brad, it's Gozer from the 618. Hey. Hey, um. 618 forever. Thought, maybe stop calling uh, old people, you know, because they're always like, ooh. Uh. I want to hear you call, like, a soccer mom who's trying to get the kids out the door. At I call plenty of soccer moms. Like, that liquor store lady pretending she didn't go to the liquor store, probably because her kids were in the car with her. I bet she was a soccer mom. In the morning. And She's probably taking her kids to soccer when I called. You know, let her know that you're putting dandelions in her lawn. So. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got. All right, bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Brad, where are you, man? I don't know. I'm caught up on all the shows, waiting for more, and they're just slowly, slowly, slowly not coming anymore. No, I think you owe us. An they're slowly still coming. Explanation of what's been going on. Just very, very, very slowly. You've been smoking weed lately, and mm, we'll see, man. But what's going on? Where, where are the shows? Uh, I did a Boy. show earlier this week. 
I'm doing this show to make up for not doing a show last week. Because, yeah, I know it was like 12 days in between. And by the way, get used to that because I don't know how it's going to go while I'm gone on vacation. I'm doing things a little bit differently this year. And I think it's all going to work out. I think I'm going to be able to keep up with the shows, but we'll see. Hey, RB, it's the Duelist. Hey. hey, I just finished the book for like the ten, like the tenth time. Favorite part in the book is is the radio DJ like prank calls and you and you telling that one guy uh, that you were with Scientology. Oh, yeah. uh, it's, it's just a great book. It's hilarious. If anyone, don't you wish you could listen to that call? Well, guess what? On the latest Brad's Cactus Shack. I'm pretty sure I played that Scientology call, and that's over at notla.com. That's the latest one. There's been some recent activity with that DJ and me. I haven't gotten the book yet. I highly recommend it. Uh, also, the online companion is really great as well. So, oh, so maybe, to, maybe you did get to listen to the Scientology call. Say, keep up the good work. Butterfly kisses. Thanks. Hey, Brad. It's Heidi from Dallas. Hey. Texas. Um. I just wanted to say thank you for the uh, vinyl. It's true, everybody. She is from Dallas. I'm looking at her phone number. And the stickers and the coin and all that stuff. So thank you. Thank you for ordering a vinyl record from phonelosers.bandcamp.com. Hey, Brad. It's Fun Society Arcade. Hey. I'm breaking my decades of voicemail silence to weigh in on the question about uh, from about six months ago that everyone's probably forgotten about now as to whether you should mention cantenas on the show. And I just wanted to say that I'm pro cantenna. Hell yeah. But also that I'm going to be at the meetup in September. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. Oh, yay. Yeah, cantenna is an awesome word. Why would I not say that? Who cares that nobody knows what that means? I'm going to keep saying cantenna forever. Hey, Brad. Uh, do you ever worry that you're going to call, like, every phone number that there is and then not have anyone to, uh, you know, prank call anymore? No, I do not. Because then I will have accomplished something, right? Once that happens, I'm going to have to invent time travel so that I can just prank call people from other decades and centuries and stuff and finish. So I could just keep going forever. Man, that would be fun, being able to prank other decades. I need the time call, prank call device machine from South Park so I can prank the past. Somebody get me that, please. Thank you. I think that's going to do it for voicemails and for today's show. So thanks, everybody, for listening. If you liked this episode, you can thank Mother Yaya, Alf Alpha, Panda Bananas, Red Beard, and Carter Hayes, 6969. Thanks, everybody, who supports us on the Patreon. Goodbye. I love you. Oh. Let's try and call that liquor store back one more time, just in case I'm able to talk to Tom. Liquor, this is Megan. How can I help you? Hey, Megan. Is Tom Brown? Um, I don't think he's in right now. Oh, darn it. Where'd he go? Um, I I don't know. I work over in so I just got here. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, well, I I installed a uh, hidden wireless microphone up there by the register the other day when I was in there looking around. Okay. And, um, it's not working now. Did the battery die on it? Um, you're going to have to hold on. Again, I, I'm from Floral, so I don't know. So hold on. Let me hand it to someone who might know. To who? Lisa? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Well, she's the only uh, manager on duty right oh, now. Oh, I know. I'm just saying. Ugh. I'm sure you feel the same way. Everyone's Ugh. entitled to their own opinion. Ugh. That's mine. Well, if you don't want to... If you don't... If you don't want to speak with her, you can call back tomorrow. Oh, I'll speak with her. I'm, I'm just saying, ugh. Ugh to Lisa. Ugh. Well, it looks like I got my hidden wireless microphone back. I can hear the register again. This is perfect. Is 
Megan still talking about me? Hi, Megan. What are you doing? I'm just waiting patiently. You know, all I had to do was turn my volume way up, and I could hear everything you were whispering about me. It was pretty gross. Talking that way about a customer while I'm listening. You know what I think about you now? Yuck. Oh, shit. I guess Lisa didn't want to talk to me just because I have an opinion.